By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Aften Troll Cup in Leeuwarden, the Netherlands. And we are in round number three. And in round number three, we're going to look at Martin, who's playing a Yakmov Priest deck. It's black, it's got a lot of artifacts in there. And of course, it's got some of the blue splashes and the Wheel of Fortune. But it's dominantly black and artifacts. It's super cool. It's built around Yakmov Priest. And he's taking on Wander, and he's got a Wander Control deck. Uh, he's playing with two Wanderlusts. And his deck is super control. It's got like four mazes of if and a lot of other stuff. So both of these decks are quite original. So I'm really looking forward to do the deck techs with you and go through the decks and go through what they want to do with their decks. But before I jump into the deck tech section of this video, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also skip that section and go straight to the games. I know some of you prefer to do that. The easiest way to do that is by checking out the description below because there you will find uh, several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in the description below, you can also find more information about this tournament, the rules and links to the tournament pages on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, now that you are fully informed, I'm going to start with the deck of the player on the left. That is Martin. Let's take a look at his brew. And here we see the Yakmov Priest deck of Martin. And it's really cool to see somebody brew around Yakmov Priest. We just see a lot happening here in this deck. I'm just first going to start with uh, the main player, so with Yakmov himself. So what does he do? I'm just gonna read you the current errata. It's one black and one to cast for a creature, Phyrexian Human Cleric from Antiquities. Tap, sacrifice an artifact, add an amount of black mana equal to the sacrificed artifact's mana value, and it is a one, two. Now you can already see, just by looking at this photo, this goes really well with Tetravis and Triskelion, because Tetravis and Trike both come in with plus one, plus one counters on it that you can do something with. So after you've used those plus one, plus one counters, you can sack them to the Yakmov Priest, and because their casting cost is six, you get six black mana, which is huge. Now you're probably thinking, what are you gonna do with the black mana? Well, actually there's one really good target for all that black mana, and that is Drain Life. So Drain Life, is a sorcery, it's one black and one an X, and it reads, spend only black mana on the X cost, drain life deals X damage to any target, you gain life equal to the damage dealt, but not more life than the player's life total before the damage was dealt, the planeswalker's loyalty before the damage was dealt, or the creature's toughness, right? So if a creature, for example, has one toughness, you can only gain one life from it. So it's like impossible to just sink in all your black mana and gain that much life, that's not possible. But of course, it's in this deck mainly to target the life total of the opponent. And when we look at the rest of the deck, um, it's interesting, right? Because the early game, he probably wants to play out his Black Vice, wants to play out a Howling Mine, and that way deal some damage to his opponent. Then he wants to start, you know, deploying his Triskelions and his Tetravuses. He's also playing with four Suchis and two Juggernauts. So there's quite a lot of pressure on the opponent. And as soon as he's done enough damage with these, you know, with combat, with the Black Vice strategy, then he's gonna start to sack those artifacts probably to, you know, play a Drain Life and finish the opponent off. And of course, you can also use your uh, Priest of Yakmov to, for example, sack your Suchi, use the mana you get from the Suchi, because when it dies, you also gain four extra mana to cast, for example, a bigger creature like a Trike or maybe two creatures in a turn. You just have a lot of mana and that opens up a lot of possibilities, right? We also see the power cards here that's gonna make the deck even stronger. We've got the blue power, we've got the Wheel of Fortune. We, of course, have a Demonic Tutor in here. Uh, it's nice to see that there's no Mind Twist in this deck. That's pretty cool. Um, what I also like or like, but what I understand, let me put it that way, is that he's playing with a lot of mana ramp, you know? He's playing with a lot of expensive artifacts, especially the Tetravuses and the Trikes, so you wanna be able to play them out quickly. I think with this deck, you can, because he's playing with all the Moxen, the Black Lotus, the Mishra's Workshop. He's playing with three Felber Stones that you can see they're right next to the Soul Ring. Um, it's all altered, by the way, most of the cards, actually. So it's uh, it's really a beautiful deck to look at, but maybe it's quite hard for you to recognize some of the cards. Feel free to ask me in the description below, and I'll give you some information. One of the things that I find really um, interesting here is the sideboard plan, because he's playing with three Underworld Dreams in the sideboard. So, for example, when he's not on the play, he could choose to board out the Black Vices and board in the Underworld Dreams, or when he's playing against a Super Control deck, hint, hint, because I know that Vander, his opponent today, is playing Mega Control, uh, he can decide to board out some creatures and board in some more Underworld Dreams, because a Control deck basically, you know, wants to control the board, wants to make sure that it cannot be hurt by creatures by playing, for example, with a lot of Maces of If, 
But then if you play Underworld Dreams, that kind of goes around that strategy. So that could be definitely could be an option in game games number two and three here for Martin. Anyway, this is the deck of Martin. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Vander Control. And here we see the deck of Wander. So I've called it Wander Control because of those two beautiful Wanderlusts there in the middle. So Wanderlust is an enchant creature from green, one green and two to cast. It reads, at the beginning of the up upkeep of enchanted creature control controller, Wanderlust deals one damage to that player. So it's basically like a ping effect. So you put it on a creature and that works really well with Maze of If. We see four Mazes of If in this deck because you don't mind the creature being alive and that it can still attack because you're simply going to send it back with your Maze of If or tap it down with your Icy Manipulator. But Wanderlust is, well, one of the ways for Wander to actually win the match. He's also playing with a huge Fireball there, so that Fireball can be really good. He's playing with some creatures in the sideboard. We see some Sarah Angels in there, so he could choose to bring them in. Um, the rest of the deck actually really reminds me of your regular, you know, blue-white control deck. It's got a little bit of the deck elements as well. We see, for example, three Jam Day Tomes, so it's quite heavy on the Tome. We see the regular splashes in the form of Mind Twist and Demonic Tutor. We see the white control package with Disenchants and Balance. We see the blue control uh, with, of course, the Mana Drain and the four counter spells, and, of course, the, uh, the blue card draw in the form of Brain Geyser and Ancestral Recall and that extra turn that he can get with uh, with time walk i actually think the extra turn in this deck i mean it's still good it's an extra turn but it's not as good as for example in a, in a creature heavy deck uh but yeah it's still a crazy card because you just get an extra turn for two mana that's it's still it's still insane you know we always when i'm playing with my brother we're playing with power we just call them cheat cards we say like, i'm just going to play my cheat card because they're just so ridiculously powerful one blue mana for three cards one blue mana and one for an extra turn i mean you know, that's just ridiculous. Uh, but it's really cool to see, of course, the cards here. And also, Martin has access to the same cards. So that's kind of nice to see them battling it out. So it's basically really a the deck style deck, but then with two Wanderlusts in it. And it's really super controlish, right? With the four mazes of if, and he's really gone for the Jam Day Tomes. It's not a creature heavy, the deck strategy that we sometimes see as well. You know, I remember tournaments where uh, players chose to play with Sarah Angels and Mamo Di Jins right next to all those control cards. That's a different route. So Vonder is really going that control route. And that's also why I said that I think after game one, Martin is probably going to board in the Underworld Dreams because it seems to be a really good card against a deck like this. Although Vonder, of course, having access to white, he could deal with enchantments through Disenchant. He could also counter them. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world if an Underworld Dreams hits the board, you know? <laughs> Vonder's like, okay, it's annoying, but it's not the end of it. Um, yeah, so this is looking like a very strong control deck. We just watched, uh, saw the deck of, uh, of Martin, two original decks that have original cards in them. So I'm really looking forward to this battle. Let's go to round number three of the Often Troll Cup, Vonder Control versus Yakmov's Tools. Game number one is about to begin. We have Martin on the left. He's playing with his uh, Yakmov Tools deck. So it's mainly black and artifacts and he's taking on Wander and he's on Wander Control. It's kind of like a, the deck but then with Wanderlusts in it, which is pretty cool. I love seeing Wanderlust. Let's look at the opening here by Martin who's taken a mulligan by the way. Gone down to six, he's on the play. Playing a Yakmov Priest at the start, or I should say Priest of Yakmov. I keep saying it wrong. Sorry, it's Priest of Yakmov, not Yakmov's Priest. What it does is one black and one for a one-two creature from Antiquities. Tap to sacrifice target artifact and you gain black mana equal to the casting cost. So for example, if you sack a Tetravis, you gain six black mana. And now he's passing the turn. We do see a Wanderlust in the hand of Wander. That's quite nice. Playing an Underground Sea, passing the turn. And there is a Swamp. A nice altar on there. There is a Black Vice. Ooh, and a Howling Mine. That's gonna put some pressure on Wander. And remember, he's doing all this before Vonder is able to counter because he's got a counter spell in hand. But, you know, this is the problem in old school. Yes, counter magic is great, but it's not that great because you get crazy ram decks like this. You know, it's very common for, for decks to play all the mocks in. And then if they can just find one mox, it's a huge ramp. And especially when you're on the draw like Vonder, then it's really hard to use those counter spells. He's got two counter spells in hand now. Just took three damage from the vice, dropped to 17. And I mean, this is looking difficult for Wander already. He really needs like a disenchant for that vice. Is Martin going to put the priest into the red zone? I guess that's what I would do. We just put him on 16 here. And 
And I don't think Vondor can do anything. I don't see any kill spells in hand, no swords. And actually, you couldn't cast that with the Felwar Stone because Martin doesn't have any white mana or lands that produce white mana. There's a time walk. Okay, so he's going to take an extra turn. And that's really nice with the Howling Mind because it means another two cards. That is great. So instead of just drawing the one, he's drawing two because of the Howling Mind. He also has a trike in hand. He could consider sacking the Howling Mind, but why would he? I mean, the Vice is doing so much work. He's going for Chaos Orb instead. I guess I would attack the mana base here. Let's see what Martin's going to do. He's going to activate the Chaos Orb. He's going to flip it. Yeah, exactly. On the Tundra. Another Orb flip. Here we go. Flip. Beautiful technique. It's so much fun to see all these different players with their different techniques. Everybody does it slightly different. It's just a lot of fun to see. And uh, Vander will now take more damage. Unfortunately for him, he's going to draw two. Well, first he's going to take the damage. Of course, he's going to drop to 18. Look at that. Finding a Library of Alexandria. Normally, that would be super good. But now with that vice, it's not that great. I believe he's got eight cards in hand. Now, could choose to deploy the library and draw an extra card. But it is quite risky. He is thinking about the Mishra's Factory. Then again, if he tries to draw extra cards with the library, he's probably getting closer to a possible solution like a Disenchant. The problem is he also lost the Tundra, so he lost his source of white mana. And this is of course the thing with these five color decks. They can be quite greedy with the mana base. So he's gonna tap, he's gonna go to eight in hand. Can he find something? Oh, there's nothing in there that he can play out. And I recognize this because I'm, of course, playing with... When I'm playing with my Timmy Spellbook, which is, you know, mono blue, it's, I kind of call it mid-range control. I have these situations as well. A vice can really be super annoying for these uh, control decks. And he's discarding the Wanderlust. Oh, no, Wander, how could you discard your card, man? I guess you got to do what you got to do. There is a Felwer Stone, I believe. It's hard to see with the altar, but I think it's a Felwer Stone. Really cool swamps, by the way, on the side of uh, Martin there. This one has a Juzam Jin on it. That's baller. Um, he can attack here for one, right? Just put him on 12. Why not? I would maybe even have considered countering the Felwer Stone just to empty the hand, you know? He's going to drop to 12. He's got seven in hand. He's going to take three more. Going to drop to nine. I mean, this is tough, and if he's low enough, Martin can, you know, there's another priest. Martin can choose the moment where he's going to sack. There's a counterspell on the priest. I think that's a good decision. And a pass here, because you just want to empty the hand. Going to take two points of damage, I believe. So he's now on 10. Wasn't he on 13? Shouldn't he have gone to 11? Anyway, he's drawing two cards now. He can play a land, play the Felwer Stone. But it's not really going to help him, is it? He is going to play the Mace. He's kind of emptying his hand. Six in hand now still, though. So he's going to take two more points of damage next turn. Going to drop to eight. And what I wanted to say is that Martin can wait until he's low enough. And then he can play the Trike and deal the final points of damage. But I guess he can already play the Trike because he's got enough mana. He doesn't have to sack an artifact to do so. There's the mace on the priest, so he's going to stay on 10. That's something. The thing is, if he plays the trike now, he taps out, and he's probably going to walk into a counter spell. And I think the best thing for Martin to do right now is just do nothing, which is hard in Magic, you know, to know when you, ha when you can just do nothing. Because he's only helping Bonder if he's going to cast something. It looks like he is, though. He's going to play a Suchi. I'm sure we're going to see a counterspell. There's the counterspell. So now Vonder's going to five cards in hand. He is tapped out, though. There's the pass. So one damage here for Vonder. Going to go to nine. Going to go draw two more cards. He's going to go back up to seven again. There's a Chaos Orb. That's quite good. He can play the Orb. And he could do it on the Vice. And then he can still have mana open to counter, which is ideal. It's the game he wants to play. So he's kind of getting back into this. So there's the Chaos Orb. There is, he's gonna activate it on the Vice. 
So our second orb flip in game one. We're getting spoiled. Let's see what Wonder t uh, Wonder's technique looks like. Oh, it's a different technique, but also good. A lot of spin on that orb, hitting the vice, and the vice is gone. And now Wonder can kind of play his game, right? He can sit back and relax, but I think that this is the moment for Martin to sack the Howling Mine to the Yagmoth Priest. He's gonna tap six first. It looks like he's gonna try to play the trike. And there's gonna be a counter spell here. There's the counter spell. This is the kind of magic Wander wants to play, and he can play a regrowth on a counter spell next turn as well to make matters even worse. I still wonder if Martin is going to sack the uh, the Howling Mine. He's gonna attack instead. There's the untap and a pass. He's not gonna do it. I think maybe I would have sacked it. I mean, I understand it feels bad because then you're just sacking it and you're doing nothing with the two black mana, but now you're giving your opponent an extra card. And look at that, he's drawn into a mind twist. He's tapped out. I'm pretty sure he's gonna cast a twist now. Yeah, that's what he's gonna do. Mind twist for two. Martin's gonna lose his cards. And look at this, Wander is really taking over the game here. He's thinking maybe he doesn't want to play out the land because he's on five next turn. He would go to seven. He can use the library. I think it's probably better for him just to exactly pass turn. Keep it in hand because you want to get to seven and use your, your library of Alexandria. And I guess it's also a good thing that Martin keeps the Howling Mine around because he only needs, well, Vander's still on nine. So he needs a lot actually, but at least the Howling Mine helps him to find some, some new cards. Maybe a draw seven. You know, he's playing with uh, Wheel of Fortune and a Time Twister. And remember, you know, Wander has gone through three counter spells. There it is, the Time Twister. This is really good news. So Wander could still cast a Disenchant, targeting, for example, the Felwer Stone. I think that would be actually a good decision. But then, of course, in response, Martin can use the Yakmov Priest. Okay, he's going to do it on the Howling Mine. Interesting. He's going to use the Yakmov Priest, so he has two black mana floating. And this is a really good moment for, uh, for Martin to find that Time Twister. He really needed that little bit of, uh, of luck. That was a really good top deck. And then now we're gonna shuffle up again and draw seven new cards. I'm really enjoying this match thus far. For a moment in the game, I thought it was going to be a Vice Howling Mind victory. But Wander found the answers, got rid of the Vice, and that changed the entire game. And now both players are gonna draw a fresh seven. It's still Martin's turn. He's got two black mana floating and that Underground Sea and a Felwer Stone. So he has four mana. So, uh, I mean, remember, he's playing with a playset of Suchi and with two Juggernauts. There we see a Mox Emerald. So he's got five mana now, but he needs six to play like a Trike or Tetravis. Tetravis would be quite good on this board because of that Maze of If. He could take it apart into little 1 1 flyers and try to attack. I do see a Suchi in there. Could choose to play out the Suchi. Two mana, Demonic Tutor. Okay, he's gonna tutor for something. Time Walk, right? I guess he's gonna go for Time Walk. That would be really, really good right now. He could play the Time Walk, take an extra turn, play out all those bigger creatures. Also, the Maze is tapped. Not super relevant, but still he could consider attacking with both of his priests. Got two damage in, which is not too bad. Yeah, that's the Time Walk. Makes absolute sense here. And Wander, of course, not feeling great because he tapped out because of the disenchant, which was understandable. But still, he's tapped out and it never feels good for a control player. You're like, oh no, it feels like you're naked. What else can he do? I mean, he still has some mana left. He's got three mana left. I think it's just not enough because he needs four to play the Suchi. I mean, oh, of course, he's going to play the Time Walk. Yeah, duh. So he's going, to, he's going to use the mana to play the time walk. Sorry, guys. 
And he's gonna play the land for turn. He hasn't played a land for turn. Okay, that's cool. So he's gonna untap now. And I guess in hindsight, it's good from Wander to disenchant that Howling Mine because now Martin's only gonna draw one card instead of two. But now Wander can do, or sorry, Martin can do so much. You know, he's got his whole handful of creatures there. Still no drain life though, because a drain life could get him really close to victory. One of the things he could do is play the trike, deal three damage to Wander, then Wander would be on six. Sack it to the priest, play something else. He actually has enough mana to play and a trike and a, and a Suchi. He also has a Tetravis in hand, so he could consider playing the Tetravis instead, like I said. You know, the Tetravis is quite good against Maze of If, because in your upkeep you can take the counters off, make them into 1-1 flyers, so you basically have 4-1-1 flyers. So this is interesting. And remember, he can of course also just attack with the priests, deal 2 points of damage, and deploy all those creatures. So he's got a lot of options, and I believe I saw a balance in Bonder's hand. The balance is actually ridiculously good. So this is quite interesting, right? If Martin chooses to play the trike, it would be a much better option because of the balance in hand, but of course he doesn't know about the balance. Gonna play a Suchi. Really nice art there on the Suchi, by the way. And now he's gonna play the Tetravis. Oh, this is gonna be a killer turn. Next turn is gonna be so tough to swallow for Martin because that balance is definitely gonna hit the board. The thing though is for Wander, if he plays the balance, he is going to lose a lot of cards. So he's probably going to try to empty his hand first. So Max Ruby is great for that. He also has a Soul Ring in hand. Oh, and he did play out not the Tetravis, but the Trike. That is much better. I thought he was going for the Tetravis, but he's played out the Triskelion. That is much better because that Trike in response to the balance, he can at least still deal three damage to Wander, which will put him on four. And remember, he hasn't found a single Drain Life, but he is playing with four Drain Life in the deck. We see no counter magic, I believe, in hand here for Wander. One of the things Wander could do as well is just play the second Mace and play a Divine Offering on the Suchi, gaining four life. And I'm saying on the Suchi and not on the Trike because the Trike can kill itself. But the balance is super tempting here because it's 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 it takes care of all the creatures. Yeah, he's got a balance here, right? He can just discard some lands. He can discard the Wanderlust again. He is thinking about it. Divine Offering or Balance. Going for the balance. I understand this play. Of course, Martin's going to shoot three points of damage to the life total of Wander here. Going to drop to four. But this is a really understandable move. And a really good move, I mean. The downside is he's got to discard two cards. And actually, look at that, Martin also losing lands, and that is relevant because he's playing with the Drain Lives. So losing two Swamps is a pretty big deal. This is a really good balance from Wander. And he's gonna pass the turn here. I mean, it's looking really good for Wander. The only problem that he has is that he's on four. <laughs> you know, that's the problem. And he doesn't have any counter magic in hand. He does have a maze, though, and a Divine Offering. So the Divine Offering is really good against the deck of Martin. Martin, if he's going to play out his Tetravis, which he probably will, is going to be killed by the Divine Offering. And that'll put uh, Wander on 10, because it's going to give him 6 life. Look at that. Very disciplined. First going to play out the Suchi. Play out the Workshop. Is he going to commit to the board here? Yes, he is going to play out the Tetravis. Empty hand. Yeah, and this this is what Maze of If does. Because Wander has a Maze of If, Martin kind of knows I have to play multiple threats to deal damage. And that's exactly what Wander wants him to do. Another reasoning for Martin, of course, is thinking, okay, already played out the balance, so I can commit to the board. I don't have to worry about the balance anymore. But that Divine Offering is beautiful in the hand of Wander. Exactly. It's going to give him six life and take care of the threat. And the Tetravis is just a great weapon to get around the mazes of If, but it's gone now. Wander's on 10. It's looking quite good for him at the moment. Ooh, now it's looking even better with that GMD Tome. He can do his control thing. 
Uh, Martin was almost there. If he could have just found a drain life in that uh, time twister hand, he would have won already. But now Wander's back on 10 with the book. It's looking really good for him. And I, th I think if you're Martin, you're going to hope for like a Wheel of Fortune. Because he needs another draw 7 to kind of get back into this. Activating the book here, there is a Ancestral Recall. Wow, this is going to make matters even worse. Now remember, Vander doesn't have a lot of win cons in his deck. You know, he's got a Fireball and two Wanderlusts. So this could take a while. There we see a Counterspell and a Disenchant in a pass turn. And that Counterspell is really good. It's going to protect him. From a, uh, from a potential... Oh, we're going to see another card, though. There's a Juggernaut going to protect him from a uh, potential Drain Life. There's that Disenchant. He can just take care of probably the Suchi. Yeah, and because he's drawing now twice as many cards as Martin with that uh, Jam Daytona, it's going to be super difficult for Martin to actually win this. And remember, these rounds are timed, so Martin can actually consider... I mean, I wouldn't do it now, but after a few turns, if, you know, Wander is going to continue being dominant, you can consider just uh, conceding and moving on to game number two. So there's a fireball in hand now for Wander, but Wander, there's no need for him to play it yet. He's just going to wait. And he's going to pass the turn here. He's got two mazes, no need to play the disenchant. He also has... Control, ma uh, sorry, an IC manipulator in hand. So he's got like complete control of the game. And again, one of the big problems here, there we see a Howling Mine. Okay, that's actually pretty good. I wonder if he's gonna disenchant or counter this. I actually would consider countering it, to be honest. Well, first take two cards, of course. Sorry, to disenchant it. First draw two cards, of course. So untapped, you can even draw an extra card with your low, exactly go to eight. Now draw two cards, go to 10. This is just insane. <laughs> Look at that. He's got a time walk. Now this is what I talked about. Time walk is just not as good in these decks. It's still a fantastic card. But I think, for example, in the deck of Martin, it's, it's even better. There's an Icy Manipulator. And with the time walk, of course, and the Howling Mine, he's going to draw extra cards, which is quite nice for him. Going to draw an extra card. Yeah, it's it's as good as over here. So again, like I said, I wonder if Martin, how long he's going to continue playing this uh, this game. Because it's a tournament, you have 50 minutes to play your games. So Vander, he's got a handful of cards. Got a discard down to hand size. But he can still play out some more stuff. Of course, he just took his turn. Play out a Chaos Orb. Did he play out a land for turn yet? I'm not sure. Oh, of course, now he can tap down the Howling Mob. But that's not going to work, though, because you've got untap, upkeep, draw. So Martin's still going to draw two, though. So I don't really understand this move. He's probably going to play a Regrowth. He could just play it on... The um, time walk or the ancestral recall. I think maybe I would have kept a regrowth in hand actually because it just there could be some kind of weird scenario where you need that balance again. Oh, look at that! Gonna get back the wanderlust. Now, I do love that wonder that you're doing that. I think that's cool, man. I really appreciate that. And he's gonna pass, wants to keep two counter spells open. That's why he passes and not plays out the wanderlust yet. But, I mean, this game is in the bag. So, he's going to pass the turn now, right? There's the untap. Upkeep. So what Wander could do is tap it in the upkeep. Maybe that's what they're discussing. If he taps it in the upkeep, then, you know, um, Martin is not going to draw two cards. Untap, upkeep, draw. Anyway, there's the attack. Two mazes of if activations. There is a swamp. 
And there's another Felwer stone. So Martin not throwing in the towel. Wants to keep playing this game. There we see a Library of Alexandria activation. So eight cards in hand, gonna to go to 10 cards in hand. Wow, this is insane. And that Fireball is getting closer and closer as well to being lethal. Uh, we can have a look, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12 mana. He's first gonna play the Wonderlust here. It is cool to see the Wonderlust. On the Juggernaut. And let's see what else he can do. I mean, he's got so many options. Are we going to see the Mind Twist for one? Probably. Mind Twist for one. This is like your ultimate control, right? So he's going to lose. I believe that's another Felwer Stone. So that doesn't matter much. A life of luxury. That is what Wonder is living right now here in Game 1. And there were moments in the game where I really thought that Martin was going to get it. But now it's close to impossible. He's going to take, of course, a damage from the Wanderlust. Going to drop to 19. Going to attack. Wander's going to use the mazes. Looks like he's going to try to cast something. But I wonder if it's going to get through. There's a Tetravis. I mean, he could just use his Disenchant. He doesn't even have to use a Counterspell. Probably going to do that on end step. First going to draw a card. Right, Going to go to 8. Oh, there's a Brain Geyser. I mean, he doesn't really need him. He could draw even more cards. Anyway, Disenchant here. Tapping down the Suchi. I wonder why, actually. Just because you can, right? You got your IC open, so why not? There's a Mishra's Factory. Still has that Fireball. It's not lethal yet, though. Look at that. Two counter spells. Mana Drain, a Fireball, a Brain Geyser. <laughs> so much stuff in there. Oh, man. Playing City in a Bottle Main. Eh? That's interesting to see. And is he now going to tap it down in the upkeep, right? Untap, upkeep, exactly. And now Dry is just going to draw one. And he's going to take a damage. Don't forget your Wanderlust damage, or else this game will never be over. There's the attack. There's the draw. Another Wanderlust. Oh, I'm happy to see the other Wanderlust. Both Wanderlusts are going to make their entrance into this game. That would be pretty sweet. Yeah, he now only draws one, though. So Wander is really struggling with these, uh, the Howling Mine. So the Howling Mine is one of the two artifacts in Old School Magic that you can deactivate by tapping them. So it's Winter Orb and Howling Mine. The thing is though, if you tap the Howling Mine on your own end step, because it's first untap, upkeep, draw, then you're untapping the Howling Mine, so it's activated again before you draw. But if you, for example, tap the Howling Mine during the upkeep, which is the proper way to play it, so in your opponent's upkeep, your opponent only draws one, but you also only draw one. But usually that's still better, because if your opponent is playing with a Howling Mind, you have a plan with it. Anyway, there's the second Wanderlust, which is really cool to see. And look at this. Wander is not even tapping down the Howling Mind anymore. I think, personally, I would still do it. I mean, he's, he's won this anyway, but... I mean, Wander is drawing a lot of cards anyway with the Jam de Tome and the Library of Alexandria. So does he really need the extra card? Okay, there is the Black Vice. So he still has a disenchant in hand here. That's the thing, of course, with card draw, it means you always have answers to threats, and that's exactly what we see happening here in this game. There's a Wheel of Fortune. Okay, so I'm expecting a counter spell on the wheel. Yeah, and I mean, you know, Martin is really trying. He's like, I'm gonna start with the vice, maybe he'll counter the vice, and maybe there's a miracle and he doesn't have another one, and I can. You know, and I can then play out my wheel. You gotta play towards your outs, so I understand. He's gonna tap four to draw a card. He's gonna disenchant, right? Now he's got seven, now he's gonna draw into card eight, and then he's gonna disenchant, that makes sense. Mirror Universe there in hand now for Wander. 
There's the disenchant on the vice. What a life of luxury for Wander. And he also has, of course, the drain life mana still. Drain life, that wheel of fortune. So he's got three extra mana he can use in his main phase. His first main phase. So he's going to draw two cards first for the Howling Mind. So he's got nine in hand right now. Maybe even more. That's just insane. So many cards for Wander. I have no idea. I've lost count, people. He still has that fireball. He's probably want to wait with the fireball until it's lethal. He doesn't have enough mana yet. He's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And of course the 3. He actually, I think it's lethal now. Because of the mana from the Drain Life. But he chooses to play a Mirror Universe instead. Yeah, he's like the uber control player, right? <laughs> he wants to play Mirror Universe and keep his 3 counter spells in hand. Because I think, maybe I'm counting incorrect, but I think he was able to finish the game right there. And now he's tapping the Howling Mine again. I think I think that's a good move on there. Because like I said, you're already drawing in more than enough cards. Anyway, there we see the attack with the Juggernaut. Ooh, he's going to take the damage. He wants to go low because he wants to flip the life. So that's quite nice. I mean, it's unnecessary, but I, I think he was already there last turn, but he's going to change a lot. I mean, this is fun seeing a Mirror Universe activation. It's always cool. It's such an iconic card in the game. I love the art. I love what it does. It's super unique. Oh, man, he's drawing so many cards. I've, I've been in this position as well. When you see your opponent drawing just so many cards, it's disgusting, and there's, like, nothing you can do. And... There's the fireball, end of the road. This is game number one. It was actually the end of the road a while ago, but uh, it was cool to see it being played out. We did, we did see two Wanderlust hitting the board, which was nice. Mirror Universe activation, and that start of game one, what a thriller that was. I mean, Martin was so, so close. If he would have just gotten that, uh, that drain life at the decisive moment, he would have actually won this first game. Anyway, both players are going to go into their sideboards, and look at that. Martin is boarding in those Underworld Dreams. That's exactly what I expected him to do. And it looks like Vonder is going to board in his Sarah Angels. Ooh. So let's give these players some time and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. And it's, of course, Martin on the play after losing that first game. Look at that. Taking a double mulligan. So starting with just five cards in hand. That is tough. Has to win this one, of course, after losing that first game. There we see a Batlands into a Soul Ring, into a Felwer Stone. Look at that, he's just emptying his entire hand. Oh man, okay. This could be over quite quick. I mean, Underworld Dreams turn one isn't, isn't that bad, but the problem of course is that he's empty handed. Tapping, okay, Yakmov Priest, that is something. Gonna take another point, gonna go to 18. What a, what a crazy first turn. And it's just bad that Martin had to take a double mulligan. I guess his first and second hand just weren't good enough. And then you're always hoping for maybe a time twister or, you know, Wheel of Fortune or at least a Howling Mines that you can kind of draw into new cards. And Vonder here, I mean, he doesn't have the strongest hand, but it's definitely good enough facing an empty hand. He's playing a Mishra's Factory. You could consider playing out the Chaos Orb just because the hand of Martin is empty anyway and the chances of him drawing into Artifact Removal is pretty slim. Oh, this is really good! This is fantastic at Time Twister. I'm super happy with this because it means we're actually going to have a proper game number two. This is a fantastic top deck by Martin. Being unlucky with the double mulligan, but at least finding a Time Twister from the top that has made up for all of that bad luck. And remember, Underworld Dreams is on the board. That means seven points of damage for Vonder. He's already taken it. So he's now on 11. Wow. This is amazing. 
I mean, everything is starting, we're starting fresh, but then with that Underworld Dreams on the table on the side of Martin, which is really, really good. So seven new cards for Wander and seven new cards for Martin. And it's still Martin Stern, hasn't had a land drop yet. I mean, in a perfect world, he would find a time walk right now. That would be really, really good for him. Does have a Demonic Tutor in hand, so could play a land and into Demonic Tutor. Taking back his bad lands. What he could do here is if he has a blue source, he doesn't, I guess. That is too bad, or else he could have used his Priest of Yakmoth to sack his Felwerstone, use the two black to cast the Demonic Tutor, find a Time Walk, and then play out the Time Walk. But he doesn't have blue mana, that's a problem. Well, he does, but the Felwerstone is tapped. If he has a Felwerstone in hand, though, does he have vices in hand there? Does he have two vice? That is pretty devastating as well. He's gonna sack the Felwerstone for a Demonic Tutor. He could go for a Wheel of Fortune, dealing seven more points of damage. And then, that is interesting, and then he could play out the, um, the Vice. So first the Vice, then the Wheel of Fortune. He doesn't have enough mana for that though. Because the Wheel of course is three mana, not two. But I think he's chosen a Wheel of Fortune here. There is a Black Vice. Oh, he's got double vice. In that case, I would play out both black vices, right? Exactly. Both vices. Oh, 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 this is really good. So out of nowhere, that time twister changed everything. He's probably looked up a third vice then in this case. Wow, that means nine points of damage. That is insane. He's going to drop to two. He's going to drop to one, actually. Wasn't he on 11? That's it, that's the game, what a crazy game! I wanna, I wanna go back to that moment where he took the damage because I thought he was on 11, but maybe I missed something. Let's have another look at that. And here we see that third vice being played. He's on 11, I believe he's got seven in hand. So he takes three damage per vice. Three times three, ladies and gentlemen, is nine. So he should go down to two, right? Or am I missing something? Anyway, it, it didn't matter much. Even on two, he would have died and there's nothing he could have done. But what a cool, cool, cool game number two. I really thought we were having this kind of nun game after looking at that opener from, um, from Martin. But it, again, it shows the strength of Underworld Dreams as well. And of course, the strength of Time Twister. Just reset the board and give you a fresh start. And I'm, I'm personally, I'm really happy because it means we're going to go to game number three. Game number three, here we go. The big decider. Who's gonna win, Vander or Martin? I think Vander is a slight favorite because he's on the play here, which is good, especially against the Vice deck. And he's playing a Plateau and Pastor. Didn't find his Mox Ruby. That's the only Mox that he's playing with. He does play with Felwer Stones, which are uh, an affordable alternative. What I like about, ooh, Ancestral Recall here for Martin, turn one. So that already makes it a really good opener. What I wanted to say is what I like about Flower Stone is that City of Brass is a card that's being played a lot in this format. And when your opponent has a City of Brass and you have a Flower Stone, your Flower Stone can make any time, kind of mana. So it can tap for any type of mana, which is quite, quite nice. Anyway, let's see what Martin can do here with his three new cards. He does have a Mox Emerald Swamp, Emerald into Priest of Yakmoth. No, he's got a Demonic Tutor there. I was looking at the Priest playing the Tutor. What is he going to look up? The thing is, he doesn't have any mana anymore. So probably it's something that he's not going to play out this turn. Could consider a Vice, maybe? Passing the turn. Well, I mean... He could have considered picking up a Lotus, of course. There's a Felwer Stone by Wander and a pass. I'm just really curious to see what card Martin picked up with his uh, Demonic Tutor. Probably going to be a card that he's going to play out this turn. Going to draw. We see a Drain Life in hand from the top of the deck. There's an Underground Seed. Tapping three mana. Oh, that, yeah, I thought I saw it. That's a time twister. Interesting move. Because you're also giving one Wonder 7 new cards. 
That is interesting. Wander, of course, uh, shuffling away the um, demonic tutor in his hand. And now both players shuffling up, getting a fresh seven. I think Martin is hoping for a vice here. And this is a pretty good hand there actually by Wander in terms of emptying his hand because there's a Mox Ruby and a Soul Ring. But the rest is mainly Lance. I do see Counterspell and a Regrowth. Anyway, let's see what Martin's gonna do. There's a Vice, double Vice, so he is finding the Vices. But I think it's uh, gonna be easy here for Wander to empty his hand. He is gonna take six points of damage, gonna drop to 14. Draw a card for turn, gonna go up to eight. Finding a time walk there. Playing out the Soul Ring, play out the Mox Ruby, only five cards in hand. He could play out the Time Walk, then he's got four in hand. Exactly, playing out the Time Walk. So this is great, you know, all those vices are nullified, taking zero damage here. Draw card number five. Play your Volcanic Keep Counter Magic up. That's what I would do, although the Felwer Stone is good enough for blue mana as well, so he might as well play a Strip on here. Could well, you don't want to strip the Underground Sea because then your Felwer Stone doesn't have blue mana anymore. Maybe I would have chosen for Volcanic since you're not going to use the Strip this turn anyway. There is a Felwer Stone. You could play, is that a Suchi? You could play the Suchi. Underworld Dreams. I'm pretty sure we're going to see a Counterspell here. Yeah, Counterspell. Underworld Dreams is just too risky, too explosive. You know, if Martin plays a draw seven, we saw that in game two. You go, you take seven damage, plus the vices on the board there. Is he going to regrowth the Counterspell? He's just going to pass the turn. Interesting. I would have considered regrowthing the Counterspell. I guess that's a really control player's move to do, isn't it? Anyway, he's going to tap four mana. There's a Suchi. And, re and look at the side of Wander. He's not found a single Maze of If yet. Oh, there's the Maze. <laughs> you name it and it's there. So that Maze is actually pretty perfect for Wander. He's passing the turn, still not using the Regrowth. There's the attack. Sending back the Suchi. Are we going to see the Trike now being deployed? We're going to see a Priest of Yakma first. Interesting. Or doesn't he have a trike in hand? Maybe it's a land with a trike on it. Because he's got like he's got these lands, just like the land here with the Mana Vault. He's got lands with arts on them. So sometimes it looks like he has a specific card, but he doesn't. Passing the turn here. There's another Mace. Really gumming up the board here. Yeah, I think he doesn't have a trike or else he would have played it out already. It's probably a land with trike art on it, but I'm sure we'll find out sooner or later. This is a swamp with a Juzem Jin on it there. I mean, Martin has really an insane collection. He's been on the channel a lot because just his decks are so beautiful. So I usually ask him, do you want, do you want to play on stream? There's Wander again, sending it back. This is really the game that he wants to play. Now he's going to sack the Suchi. He's going to get four black and four colorless floating. And, oh, so he does have a trike. Oh, there's the trike. Still has four black floating. And he also has a drain life in hand. This is so interesting. Tapping. Are we going to see a big drain life here? There is a Drain Life, so he's going to Drain for 8. It's a pretty big deal. Or is he going to Drain for more? Anyway, Wonder is dropping here to 7. A little bit difficult for me to follow there, but... He is dropping to 7, and I believe that Martin didn't take any damage yet, right? So he's on 27. Is that correct? Yeah, he's on 27, so that means that was a drain life for seven. There's a Sarah Angel. 
And again, Martin is quite close to the victory, but remember um, that game number one where Martin was also very close to winning and he still lost it. Divine Offering played a big part in that. And this Sarah Angel is actually quite good here for Wander. Coming in from the sideboard, he's going to fly over the robot. Of course, Martin's still at a comfortable 27. Oh, and look at that. It's a timed round. Yeah, because they're playing for so long. That means, you see that dice there, that means they have three more turns. And then the game stops. Now they have two more turns. You play five turns in total when it's time. So when that dice is on five, it's the last turn. So this is the last turn, actually, for Martin here. So it looks like it's going to be a draw. And it looks like it is a draw, but actually it isn't because the cool thing is at the Upton Troll Cup, they do orb flips to decide who gets to win. So let's go to the flips. Let's turn on some exciting music. Build up the tension. And here we go. Wonders is going to flip first. Look at that flip. Beautiful hit. Sarah Angel is the target. There's Martin. Also a hit here. So it's 1-1. One, one. We're going to continue this until the first player misses. <laughs> that was close. 2-1. It's a 2-2. Two, two. We, could, we could be here for a long time because these two players know how to flip. Oh, and then he misses. Oh, <laughs> and then he misses. You can already see that on, on flip number two, like his technique, I mean, it does flip very actively, but it does take a lot of air. And uh, yeah, he missed it here. So that means that Martin is gonna win this on orb flips. And I believe this is a first on the channel that we've seen a match that gets decided uh, by orb flips. So thank you very much, uh, Bonder and Martin for this beautiful, beautiful match. I really, really enjoyed it. And I hope that you enjoyed it too. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to do two more things. Look at this sportsmanship between the players. They're just, they're great guys. There was a great atmosphere the entire tournament. Um, but before you go, I'd like to ask you to like this video, comment on this video and share it on your socials. These things are completely free and really help Timmy Talks move forward. Another thing that you can do, by the way, is if you're not a subscriber yet, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And now that that is out of the way, I am going to ask you to do one last thing and that is visit patreon.com slash Timmy Talks because there you can find out all about the Timmy Talks Patreon program and you can become a patron of the show yourself. The cool thing is when you're a patron, you're really supporting me as a content creator and you're helping me to keep making content like this, to keep traveling, keep showing you uh, magic tournaments from all over the Netherlands and sometimes also all over Europe and the world. Who knows what, uh, what the future holds. Anyway, uh, please consider becoming a patron visiting patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for more information. One of the perks is that your name will be mentioned uh, at the end of every video in the end scroll, including this one. So let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Zing!